Let's attack maxed Town Hall 16 bases to teach you the best strategies whilst showcasing the new hero equipment, Root Rider Troop, Spirit Fox Pet, and those merged defenses. Let's start with everybody's favorite, the Electro Dragons. For this strategy, I would recommend the Archer Queen's Giant Arrow and Healer Puppet, because you tend to walk her down one side of the base to set the funnel anyway. Before I start, if you are purchasing any of these special offers in the shop, you can support a creator by purchasing pressing the C in the top right beforehand. My code is Judo and it is very much appreciated. Let's use a sneaky goblin so the queen doesn't walk in the wrong direction. I'll zoom out so you can see. And you use the ability early to spawn the healers, but snipe air defense or air sweepers. I think if we line it to this army camp here, press the ability. We get three air defense, not quite the fourth. Uh, let's use a skeleton spell to distract the ricochet cannon. Wall break there. Let's try and get the king. I think if we deploy him there, I should have used a skeleton spell to distract the monolith as well. Headhunter, that should move the king down over. And let's use the royal champion to reinforce the queen. You don't have to worry about time. E-drags are very fast. We should be luring the CC momentarily. Let's freeze that monolith because it's on the RC. Unfortunate. Poison the defending root riders. Put them in there for fun. And I think, why don't we use a rage here as well? Just to help support my queen and royal champion through that area. We've got the king's earthquake boots, so we can use that to get him into the back compartment. And now I think we can start with the e-drags. So, we can use the sneaky goblins and baby drag to funnel. Use the balloons to start absorbing any air mines. E-drags, spread them out in a line. Battle blimp, headhunter, grand warden ability. Let's rage early. We are going to have to freeze this sweeper. Rage over the top here. If you are flying into the town hall, you can use the stone slammer. But if you're not, you can use the battle blimp as I did. Let's freeze this raged up multi inferno because that's going to do a lot of damage. King's still doing good on the outside of the base there with the vamp stash uh, equipment. Rage those e drags through the back area. Archer. And it looks like we should be good here. We've got the RC ability to try and ping through these defenses. More than enough Electro Dragons. You can also use the Rage Gem gear for the Grand Warden, which would give your Electro Dragons 50% extra damage. But you tend to use a lot of Rage spells anyway, which provide 180 extra damage, and they do not stack. So that's why I like the Eternal Tome for the Grand Warden. It also gives you that flexibility of getting the Battle Blimp all of the way through the base as as well. As long as you set the funnel for the Electro Dragons, they can cruise through the base. I did put all of my heroes to the bottom right in this scenario since there was a lot of damage, but you could split that and put the king on one side and the queen on the other. But now let's show you a strategy with the new Root Rider troop. This attack follows a Super Archer blimp and I feel will be very popular at Town Hall 16. I did show you the queen charge into Root Riders in my Root Rider sneak peek video, so I wanted to teach you something different. We're going to to use one earthquake and the giant arrow to take down the bomb tower so that we can land the blimp in that location. Just trying to see what we can line this giant arrow up with. The air defense will protect the healers that are spawned. So if we place the queen here, press the ability, we're good. Okay, let's see which way the queen goes before we do anything else. But the earthquake will take out the bomb tower, meaning the bomb underneath is not going to hit my super archers. Okay, so she's going that way. Let's go a baby dragon. Maybe a balloon there as well to help funnel. Or to help protect her, sorry. Three balloons down the bottom to check for traps. Nothing there. So rocket balloon to absorb fire from the royal champion because it's quicker. Followed by the blip. Okay, queen looks okay, but she's going to lose her healers. Not much we can do about that. So invis. One, two, three, and four. Invis. Clones. Rage. Invis. One, two, three, and four. Invis, you want to make sure you are counting to four and turning your super archers invisible. Okay, so then at this point, we can go Ice Golem, King, Root Riders, break us into the base previously. Let's get a Headhunter up there to protect my queen look by the enemy king. But now we can use the Electro Titans, followed by the Grand Warden, sorry. And I do have the Rage Gem on the Grand Warden. Let's get the RC in there as well. So the Rage boosts all of the Root Riders' damage by 50%. I've still got the Barbarians spawned from the King ability because what I want to do is time that with the Grand Warden ability. So there we go, with the Eternal Tome. It will take a little bit of getting used to saying 
the warden ability and now I'm going to actually have to clarify what it is that the ability is doing. So now you can see all of the massive amounts of troops ripping apart the inside of the base. We can start to try and clean up on the outside. I do have a mixture of troops in this composition. The sneaky goblins sometimes help you to funnel initially. That is the main benefit of using this new troop after the Super Archer Blimp, because previously we needed the Super Warbreakers boosted to get the heroes into the base to clean up afterwards. Now the Root Riders break everything through, you can take whatever super troops you want to best customize to the base. I like to take these Sneaky Goblins because they're great for helping to funnel initially. I didn't need them in this instance, but when you're planning war attacks, you can obviously adjust the army slightly to whatever you need, but the core strategy is exactly the same. Now I want to show you a very strong strategy following the Queen Charge. We have the Queen Charge Dragon Riders with their new level at Town Hall 16. I will be charging into the Town Hall. I don't really recommend sending the Dragon Riders there. So let's begin at the very north. We don't have to deploy the healers straight away. She's not under heavy fire and there's an air defense she's going to take out. If you can use the flinger for defensive pathing, I would recommend so. Otherwise, you can use the slammer. So let's get the healers in. Flinger, we can actually deploy down the bottom here, look. So let's use the giant to test with this. Keep an eye on our queen. She looks good. We don't have to worry about the mortar until the flinger takes out the archer tower and the air defense. So I think we will rage the queen in towards the town hall. You always want to exit into high damage areas with full health. Now let's check out this. I think we're gonna need the Yeti to tank now because we need our focus on the queen. Let's see which way she goes. This is a symmetrical base. So if she goes right or left, we can then adapt and yeah, let's use the baby dragon there. Couple of balloons. Okay, queen is under heavy fire. So let's freeze, let's rage. Once the poison wears off from the town hall, let's use the skeleton spell and hopefully that distracts the monolith. Let's actually get wizards in there. Try and funnel the queen to that monolith ASAP. Still not going to the monolith. Let's freeze and let's rage again. Still not going to the monolith. Come on, queen. What can I do here? Uh, let's turn the ice golems invisible. Go to the monolith. Oh, she's frozen. No. Oh, she's going to the outside. Okay, this is fine. Let's use the barbarian king with the wizards. Royal champion, balloons. Dragon Riders moving to the middle with the Grand Warden. To use the King and the Earthquake boots with two Headhunters. Should have probably saved a Headhunter. Rage, Grand Warden ability. So we can power through this area. The Grand Warden, I have the healing on him. Let's use the Queen ability so she doesn't go down. Use those minions to clean up. So I like the healing on the Grand Warden when you're using the balloons through with the Dragon Riders. The Dragon Riders are still at full health because of that, and the Balloons were helping to take down many of the defenses because they were boosted back up. Let's turn the RC invisible because of the defending Royal Champion. We also protect the Dragon Riders there, and we do have the Royal Champion ability. So it's really about just creating that defensive pathing so your Dragon Riders can get into the core and you can protect them with your Grand Warden. Obviously, the queen seemed too scared of the monolith in this situation, walking to the outside. But since the dragon riders had that clear path through the base, then it worked out in the end. I could have probably saved a couple of cleanup troops because it's definitely getting close on time. I didn't really highlight the spirit fox, but as you heard in my video breaking that down, most of the time I have that on the royal champion. It's awesome that I've been able to teach you these strategies courtesy of the development build. That's also why all of the walls are maxed in this situation and I hope it has been helpful to you. If you want to see my full breakdown on the hero equipment, all of the strategies you need to know for them as well, I have that video linked on your screen. Enjoy the rest of your day.